Hi everyone, I'm Patsy Jones and welcome to Tech Uncensored. And today I'm so happy my first interview, it is with Jeff Kischuk from Trippian. And we're going to talk about how his company is disrupting the travel business. So welcome Jeff. So tell me a little bit about your company. Oh, thank you, nice to meet you Hesse. Trippian is a B2B travel service where we are a recommendation service that uses AI and data for services to give really good personalized in destination recommendations for travelers. We're really helping travel companies fill the gap with personal recommendations and activities in the destination. Okay, so when I think personal, because I came from the direct mail world, so everything was personalized. To what extent these days, especially with artificial intelligence, does travel become personalized? Well, it's that's a really interesting thing. When we talk about personalized, I think we've all been chasing the definition of personas for years, of how do we understand, how do we create personas. And one of the challenges is I always use myself as a use case, where when I travel, I've got six definite personas when I travel, whether it's business, personal, friends, family, and I behave differently when I'm in a destination. So what we do is we try to identify that persona, help you self-identify, help you understand who you are, capture what you've done, to when you're traveling in that persona, be able to make those decisions and do the kind of activities you want. So you don't get recommended to go to a water slide park when you're traveling on business. And a lot of that persona, the recommendations come down to how we make the recommendations, whether it's a close referral, whether it's community-based, whether it's data from your machine learning and what you've done, or whether it's what I call a you know delightful discovery, where we'll recommend you something that you otherwise wouldn't do, but it's because we think you're in this destination and proximate, and we have a good idea that you might like that type of restaurant, so we recommend it to you. Okay, so you said a lot of stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm looking at things from a little bit different, different okay. perspective because it's about making a relevant recommendation to the person who wants a certain experience but you're also predicting the likelihood of them actually liking something. So how how much, and maybe this is more of a, an IP question, so how much of the recommendation comes based on predictive, um, the predictive side of the model versus what they've already experienced? That's a very good question, and it's, it's an area we struggle with. Not struggle with, but it's a challenge. Right. Because if I break it down to I'll take it down to data first of all. So either side of that equation, whether it's highly predictive or being able to search out a specific activity requires very accurate data. Being able to have the attribution of those points and of those places in order to even do a match. What we find is over the years and even with AI is, is the way we use the algorithms, it's trying to understand that balance. And I wish I had that we do it this way and it's always prescriptive, but the reality is is we allow users to find their own journey and find out if they want to be more open to recommendations or if they want to be very prescriptive. And it's a blend of making sure the technology can support how the user wants to interact. Because one of the challenges we find with some of the AI tools coming out there is they're too general, too, prescript too prescriptive, trying to put everybody in the same bucket where we kind of like that balance of humanity and technology in order to help you make those decisions and make sure our algorithms can steer you down that path. Okay, so that's when, yet yeah, that's a lot of information. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at things more exactly. from an algorithmic perspective and maybe before I get deeper into the actual algorithm stuff, I want you, and I'm going to hand you the mic because my arm is getting really tired, but I want you to talk a little bit about how it, and if you're using a lot of the generative AI technology today to actually either improve experience, um, um, in, um, scale the technology, what are you using today? So when it comes to the current Gen AI tools is, again, I always refer to them as tools because what we look for is how to use the Gen AI to enhance that recommendation and user. A good example of how we're using Gen AI is if somebody likes a place and you've gone to a place and you like and you want to be able to capture your own descriptions, we can use Gen AI to write a review of that place in language and style that resonates with you and then take that Gen AI output into our algorithm to do a matching. If you say you have a local pub in Toronto you like and you're going to Istanbul, 
we can use that gen ai description against our poi database to do an accurate match and help you find some place that's relevant on your emotions and the way you uh, interact with the location okay so i'm going to ask you about and maybe this is going to touch on the next question about monetization so when you you talked a little bit about discovery in the beginning so how do you make serendipity type dis, uh, i guess recommendations to the user and how much of that can be potentially um, sponsored content and how do you how do you make sure that there isn't like an over indexing on sponsored uh, type content when it, when you're serving that up to your users Thank you, and that's, that's a really good question because that's something we de have dealt with right from the beginning. And the way our algorithms are structured is we make those sponsored, con those sponsored POIs configurable. And the reason it's configurable because as a B2B, if we're working with the loyalty company that has a point conversion and participating partners, is they have a commercial reason to increase the relevance and the recommendation. And Again, that is in their ecosystem where their users are expecting recommendations from certain trusted points in their ecosystem. So we'll allow the client to increase the weighting of those points to allow them to drive conversion to their business ecosystem. For customers who don't want that sort of weighting, then we use our general weighting where it's all algorithm based and the algorithm takes into account time of day, weather, where you are and just what else you're doing so it's not just about recommending a single point, it's actually how do you orchestrate multiple points in a smart way that makes sense. So we're not sending you to a cafe five blocks away and asking you to zigzag back. So the algorithm takes more into account than just what we think you'd like, we also have to balance it with your day. Okay, so how about ratings and reviews? Because that has been, I guess, from my perspective, influential in driving a lot of consumer activity. How much of that gets baked into the model and how much of that uh, becomes part of the model after a user's experience um, on your platform? So you must have kind of examined our roadmap from years. Ratings and reviews is something I think everybody's trying to crack. Uh, back in 2019, we were working with an AI company that was doing sentiment analysis on reviews to understand accuracy, which ones were human generated, and it's, it's, you know, that's an area where as a collaborative partner where we like to be part of an ecosystem is we want to work and find that other startup, that other company who's cracking ratings and reviews for that authenticity and allow me to be able to input what kind of ratings and reviews I like and what resonates with me. So I think that's an area that's still evolving and our technology and our platform is built to take that in. But to answer your question, how we currently deal with it, we do a general weighting of it. We, we try to not use it as a driving real critical factor, but what we do is we throw out some high and low scores. We also look at the trendings in the scores to understand if a place is trending up or trending down, because there was so much inertia in these scoring, it's really hard to trust. So we, we do some things in our algorithm to filter it out to make sure we're at least having some semblance of a place that is legitimate, authentic, and matches your interests. So I'm looking at a different type of traveler. Yep. There are, my sister and I are very different people. She likes to go on trips that actually have a scheduled time to wake up, go to this place, take a rest, go to the next place, go to the next place. Everything is timed. I like to kind of explore on a day-to-day -day basis what we're gonna do today. So, so from that perspective, when you make recommendations, do you take in consideration things like fatigue, uh, pacing of activities, like downtime, rather than just maximizing the booking experiences. Yeah, that, that's correct. So we take into account even the accessibility and the pace, even if you're traveling with children and how old the children are. So our algorithm takes into account walking pace and fatigue, distance between paces. We also have the option for accessibility to choose which methods of transportation you want to go whether you want to walk, whether you want to take drive, whether you want public transit, ride shares, e-scooters. We have a system that calculates the different transfer times between it. Uh, getting back to your first question about that spontaneous versus pre-planned, is we have a new feature that we've released this year that we call Instant Algo. And the Instant Algorithm is for when you do just want to spontaneously go off and try something new and break your plan, or you've, you've gone down an alleyway, and you went off your plane, because that's how people travel, they're spontaneous, and then we'll allow you to reset. 
and get a whole new set of recommendations based on what you're changing interests or where you are. So from a privacy perspective, um, you're curating these experiences based on the collection of data. What specific data do you collect and which ones, for, I guess from your perspective, are prioritized that will provide the most optimized model um, for your users? Yeah. So with Attripian, the fact that we've been working with large B2B companies, we've been certified GDPR compliant, we've been certified PII with uh, places like Visa in North America. We believe, and of course we follow a high degree of privacy and personalization, so when it, we do not like to track any personal information. Uh, as a B2B, we like to get a unique identifier from our customer, and then what we'll do is we'll work with them or the client to get their profile, get their interest, and get from our client if they have a personal profile on that user or allow the user to generate some attributes. So we you know, have it tagged to a obscured ID, so we don't know your email, we don't know your name, we have you in our system as an ID, along with as many tags and preferences which cannot be construed as personal information. So it's a combination, that's one of the fun challenges we have working with enterprise companies is, is balancing the degree of uh, third party and first party client data they have, what they know about their customers, and then helping them with getting a mechanism to learn more about their customers. Because what we do is by gathering that information of how they behave and what they're interested in, we are able to contribute that information back into their BI tool so they can then learn more about their guests and how they travel in destination. Okay, so one last question. It seems like you're already creating, I'd say, an experience where you know the future of travel isn't really about the individual looking and doing all the research beforehand. What does, how does the experience change from, from your perspective? Like, how do you want it to change, maybe? That's the better question. That's actually a very timely and brilliant question is, We've always been a technology company. We chase the technology solutions. We embrace technology. But what we keep learning and feedback is there's a very much human element. And I mentioned earlier about human ingenuity. Is we believe, and when we travel and when we get feedback from travel, it's we believe it's going to be a blended experience. It's taking the human contact, the community, the ability to still get recommendations from your friends and family, and being able to put them into a tool and a platform that you can manage and get recommendations and make those decisions or take the decisions that are made for you. So our personal belief is again about using technology to advance human interaction, especially when people travel. There's, you know, People are always gonna travel. We believe when people travel together. Um, one of my concerns about some of the AI travel planners is they're purely a one-to-one -one experience that you'll get an AI tour guide and the earbuds in your ear and you're not I interacting with anybody. You're not with your sister, you know, discovering and learning places. So we believe that, you know, fu the tr future of travel is going to be much like the way humanities progress. It's always going to be social, it needs to be interactive, but again, we all chase optimization and we want to help with that. Actually, I, I have one more question. Uh, you are raising money. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Thank you. We're at a really interesting point. We've you know, been around for five years, so we're well-funded. We've had really good you know, angel investors and seed through the point. But where we are now, we're at a scale-up. And it's getting to that point where we have customers, we have a proven mature product, and we're looking for that strategic partner to help us get to that next step to do more expansion at an enterprise level and make sure that our organization can scale both in port sales and customer service to support those enterprise customers again on a mature platform. So we're at a really exciting opportunity of a proven company with a mature product ready for that next scale. Well, thank you so much and I wish you luck. I'm thank sure you. you're going to disrupt travel the way, the way it's meant to be in a privacy preserving way, right? Thank you. Thank you. And for everyone out there, that we are Tech Uncensored and we're going to be a collision all week. So in the meantime, take fun, have fun and take care.